All right, well, I'm in Filmic Pro, and I'm sure this has happened to you. It happens to me on occasion. I am going to go shoot, but I'm going to have stabilization off like I did right there. I had been using my phone on a tripod. And so when you use your phone on a tripod, I always turn stabilization off because you get a cleaner image, doesn't push in like the software-based stabilization does. And so today I'm gonna to go out and shoot a small B-roll sequence with no stabilization turned on and show how to fix it in post. All right, I've got my footage loaded into LumaFusion and I'm editing directly off an SSD. A great new feature in LumaFusion 3.0 and this is a Samsung T5 drive. So I've got my footage in here that I shot around the pool. And again, this has no stabilization turned on in the camera. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just play this back so you can see what it looks like. This is extremely shaky, much shakier than I would ever probably do, but sometimes you do forget to turn stabilization on. Or of course you could be using another kind of camera or lens that doesn't have stabilization. All handheld, shooting on the iPhone 12 Pro Max. No ND filter either, so it's got that staccato look because of the fast shutter speed. And then this shot is just bouncy, kind of crazy, unstabilized footage. So one great new feature within LumaFusion is stabilization. Go down here at the bottom, you'll see a stabilize icon. It's called Lock and Load Stabilization by CoreMelt. CoreMelt is a plugin, but they've integrated it within LumaFusion. And all you gotta do really, and this is what I'm going to do in my comparison today, is turn it on and it automatically corrects. And this is showing it in real time and it's quick. And so that's just the default stabilization there. And it did a really pretty good job. It is a little bit warbly, but that is some really bouncy footage. Now I could go through here into the advanced strength and you can adjust different aspects, different parameters, the horizontal strength, the vertical strength, and you can see it move. And the nice thing is you can do this as you're actually playing it back. Something you cannot do in other pieces of software like Premiere Pro, et cetera. For this test though, I'm just gonna go with more or less the automatic settings. All right, so let's back out of this. And so I applied that to each clip and let me show you what that looks like real quick. So this is now the stabilized version of all the clips. And so again, it is a little bit warbly, but it is definitely better. And a shot that bouncy, really tough to make that look perfect. Overall, it did a pretty decent job. Stabilization doing pretty well here too. And remember it does zoom in. And so these shots are tighter than the original shots. Now it's interesting though, because sometimes the beginning of these shots is a little bit bouncy and I'm not sure why. I'm thinking there could be a bug. Like the beginning of this shot. Let me go full screen. It's a little bit bouncy and then it grabs a hold. Now that's a really bouncy shot, but it's unusual why it's doing that. I'm not sure, but overall it does a pretty good job. I'm sure I could go in there and refine that. This shot does a similar thing. A little bit bouncy at the beginning, but then it clears up pretty good. And this shot here, let me go ahead and play before and after for you. This is an incredibly bouncy shot. That is all over the place. I'm doing a parallel kind of walk with the phone down by my knees. And so hard to shoot that way. And the bounciness was pretty evident. And the 
Stabilization did a pretty good job overall, but now I want to compare this to a couple other apps. All right, now I'm in Emulsio, and I'm going to bring in that one main clip, the first one, to test it out. And there it goes. I had to import that into my iPad first. You couldn't do it off the SSD, but you can see how quickly that analyzed and stabilized. I would say it's 20% or so faster than LumaFusion. Now let's take a look at the clip. So I would say it's similar to LumaFusion. It may be pushed in a little bit more. Still has that warp wobbly kind of look to it, but again, it's a tough clip to stabilize. And of course I could go in and really tweak it with the advanced features, but just wanted to compare the automatic default settings here. And one nice feature that Emulsio has is this side-by-side -side before and after comparison. So you can really see how much work it's doing and how much better the stabilized side on the right looks than the original. All right, well that's Emulsio, a really nice standalone app. You probably don't need it anymore if you have LumaFusion, LumaFusion 3.0, but it is still a great standalone option for an iPad or an iPhone. Okay, now I'm in Final Cut Pro. I sent the XML out of LumaFusion to Final Cut using the XML feature within LumaFusion, works great. Same footage in here. You can see how shaky that is. It's crazy shaky. And so we'll apply stabilization, analyzing. LumaFusion is much faster on analyzing just like Emulsio is as well. But sometimes these desktop apps do a better job and now it's done. And so here is that shot. Make that full screen. I would say that's pretty similar to LumaFusion, although probably a little bit better. Doesn't have as much warpiness to it. And then of course in Final Cut, you can change the different types of stabilization, but I'm gonna go with the default automatic look for this test, just like I did in LumaFusion. And so that is Final Cut Pro stabilization. All right, now I'm in Premiere Pro. And we'll do the same thing here, same exact sequence. I brought this in from LumaFusion. I used uh, an app to convert the XML from LumaFusion to Premiere Pro, the XML that actually goes to Final Cut Pro into Premiere Pro. So I'll apply Warp Stabilizer. And now Warp Stabilizer is considerably slower as it analyzes compared to every other app really but it does a pretty good job, typically speaking. Like right now, it's still going. The clip is 17 seconds long. And this is on an M1 Mac Mini. All right, and so now it has analyzed and we'll do a playback. And it looks pretty similar to LumaFusion. I would say it's a little bit better than what the results were in LumaFusion. It still has a little bit of that warbly effect to it, but the shot, of course, was extreme. It was a bouncy, bouncy shot. And so Warp Stabilizer works well, but it is much slower than LumaFusion. All right, so here are all the apps compared to each other. LumaFusion, Emulsio, Final Cut Pro, and Premiere Pro. Which one do you think looks the best? I personally think it's Final Cut Pro for this particular main shot. Premiere Pro does a good job. And the other ones do a good job too, but they are a little more warpy or warbly than the desktop apps. All right, and one more thing I wanted to show is I shot the same sequence, but this time with stabilization turned on which is ideally how you would want to shoot. And then you could also add stabilization and post, which oftentimes you'll need to do. But let me show this first without any stabilization added in post. This is with in-camera stabilization turned on in Filmic Pro. And it looks pretty good. It's not too bad at all actually, but you can definitely make that better in post-production. 
Oftentimes, handheld shots, especially shooting close-up stuff, will get those little bumps up and down, even with stabilization turned on. So this footage could technically work by itself, but adding some in post, which I'll show in just a second, can really improve it. Okay, now this is with post stabilization turned on in LumaFusion. And again, this is the auto setting within CoreMelt. And it's a subtle difference, but it does improve it. And in particular on this side to side shot, walking parallel to the fence, this is really nice and stable now. And so having the ability to add stabilization now in LumaFusion is huge, especially if you are a primary LumaFusion user. For me, I tend to use LumaFusion as an offline editor and then I finish in Premiere Pro or sometimes DaVinci Resolve, and those have really good stabilizers. But then Emulsio is a great standalone app too on the iPad, especially if you're not using LumaFusion or if you wanna do one-off type shots. But overall, having the ability to do stabilization like this and whatever app you're using is really great. And I think they all perform very well. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments below. And if you haven't updated to LumaFusion version 3.0, definitely check it out. It's got a lot of great new features, including, of course, stabilization and don't forget, editing off SSDs. Thanks for watching, guys. This is Blake Calhoun. Please like, subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.